Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's one of our sit downs. Cer ceremonial menu. Oh, uh, yeah. We go pretty hard for. Meme. Well, it's LaCroix. And then we thought it was LaCroix. I don't know. It transformed to Meme. So <laughs> oh, that's what we call them in our house. Okay. So, this. Obviously, judging by the title, you could tell, is going to be our breastfeeding Q&A. Sorry it took a little bit um, to get this video up, but we've just been like super busy with traveling and working on other projects, and we're getting ready to move soon, so blah, 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 blah. There's a lot going on. There's a lot. There's a lot of good things, but it's just a lot. So, um, one of the reasons why I, or we decided to do this video together even though I'm the only one that you know can physically breastfeed Isabel is because I feel like uh, well, I've heard a lot of guys talk about how they can't really help with the whole breastfeeding process but you've heard a lot of guys talk about yeah that? I've heard plenty of guys talk about that the guys like, you hanging out with well there's a lot of guys in the military I talked to basically they were like the women deal with the babies kind of thing but I mean breastfeeding that one hard. would never get along or get away with that no Breastfeeding is hard, and I think just because you don't have breasts doesn't mean you can't help with the process. We really strongly believe that it takes teamwork to from both partners to um, make breastfeeding possible. Um, I know that I couldn't have. I'm well. Isabel just turned six months, and I've still been exclusively breastfeeding her. And mm -hmm. there's no way like I could have done it without the help of somebody. So, well, and that brings us into our first question okay yeah. one of the questions that I got asked a lot when I posted about this was just to kind of talk about my overall breastfeeding experience and kind of like how long till breastfeeding got easier for me um, if I take anything to maintain my supply also like my nursing and pumping routine so that's kind of like a very you can talk about a lot of stuff with that question mm -hmm. so far my overall breastfeeding experience like I can kind of break it down into like the beginning until like where I'm at now. Yeah. But like the beginning was, it was hard. So hard. So hard. Like nobody talks about how hard it is, but it's really hard. Yeah. They gave us like this bullet like this class that kind of helped. They showed Yeah, you, we took a class at the hospital. Yeah. They yeah. showed you the latching process and how like, oh, this is how the baby should do this and blah blah blah. They never it was helpful. About, yeah. But they I never th talked about how fucking hard it was. Like how much pain you would go through. Yeah, there were definitely nights that I was I would just cry because it hurt because you know, like your nipples aren't used to it in the beginning. Like it takes mm -hmm. a while for your nipples to build up a tolerance to that type of thing. And and if you're pregnant and you're about to have your first baby and you're planning on breastfeeding, nobody tells you about cluster feeding. We need to talk oh, about cluster God. feeding. So if you guys haven't heard us talk about cluster feeding in some of our older videos, like kind of to make a long story short, when babies are very new, I would say within the first, first one to three months, mm -hmm. they typically do what's called cluster feeding. So that means that they can feed anywhere from every like 45 minutes to an hour. Um, there were nights where before we put Isabel down, I would be on the, like, like laying on the couch and she would be on my boob for five hours straight. And like any time I tried to take her off, she would scream and freak out. And kind of what essentially the purpose of cluster feeding is, is it's to help make your milk come in even more mm -hmm. and to make it more fatty and more nutrient dense. So there's definitely a reason for it. And I guess kind of like why I really want to talk about cluster feeding more is because... It feels like I think a lot of women get to that point and they think, I'm not supplying, like, I'm not getting exactly. my baby what she needs. Because it then feels they, like that sometimes. Then they feel like they have to supplement with formula because it's not... Or working. their milk just isn't good enough. Yeah. But it's kind of like one of those things that you have to fight through and just keep latching them and feeding them and latching them and feeding them. And obviously, like, you know, there are certain cases where women medically can't breastfeed so very, very we're not you know trying to yeah i mean obviously there are those cases out there but the, like generally it's like you can't come in with the mindset that you're going to have the milk your baby needs like that once she's born like it's you have to be it's a process pro so one of the other questions was like how long until it got easier for me and i would say up until about like three weeks ago <laughs> So it gets easier 
like little by little each week but now and it's different for every baby but like I would say right around five months for Isabel like she started becoming a lot more efficient with eating so it only take her about 10 to 15 minutes yeah. with each nursing ses session which and, is and she became more aware of her surroundings so she had more to entertain herself with or play with besides yeah food. so that's another thing too because like when babies are a lot younger they can nurse for comfort a lot because um, it's really the only thing that they understand when they're first born so it which makes sense you yeah. know obviously like i nursed for comfort a lot it's that's kind of like a personal choice mm -hmm. but, but that's why she's the chubble gun yeah she does not miss any meals <laughs> whatsoever. And then, like, people asked about my nursing and pumping routine. So oh, yeah. that's kind of, like, definitely when you remember how I was when I first started pumping. Yeah, pump, pumping was kind of a process that's for you to get used to because... Well, I was, it felt like, like, freaking like, out. For you, it felt like it was either she was on your boob or the breast pump was on your boob. You know, it was just constant, like, back and forth, back and forth. And you felt like you had all this pressure to get like a, a stash built up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we eventually calmed down with it, or you eventually calmed down with it and realized that... And you were pretty chill. I was like, you know, baby, it's going to be fine. And you're like, I have to pump, but then I have to do this. Like one of us had to be. I'm a perfectionist, and I overanalyze things. So if you're like me, like, try your best not to do that, because I read a lot of articles on kind of like when you should pump after you're done breastfeeding and Bottom. I was just very like it says that I have to pump one hour after I breastfeed and I have to do it for this long and blah 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 and it was just like I stressed myself out so now I'm just totally like chill about it. The way that our lifestyles are kind of set up you know we run our own businesses so we get to work from home and choose our own hours a lot but there are times when I am gone like for a large part of the day so I'm not with Chubb. So that kind of is going to be similar to people that have to work like nine to five or they have like set hours every day and you just have to pump every two to three hours that you're away from mm. the baby. Okay, so I get asked a lot on if my boobs are real or fake. This is definitely something I've addressed before in earlier videos, but I feel like let's just talk about it again because it definitely correlates to this video, this subject like a lot. Mm -hmm. So, people ask, are my boobs real? No. This, they're not real. Um, I think, like, people really want to know that aren't familiar with breast implants is if they cause problems with breastfeeding. I got, I don't know about implants that are on top of the muscle, but my implants are silicone gel submuscular, so they're, like, behind the muscle, and they have caused no problems whatsoever. It's, like, virtually impossible for them even to cause a problem with breastfeeding because my milk ducts are within my breast tissue, which has, this isn't even close to the implant. Some of you uh, ladies have asked me if like I've noticed changes in my implants, um, like as far as like the appearance of them now that I've been breastfeeding for a little while. If anything, I feel like they've just kind of, they've started to look even more natural. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what I you still, think. I still what do you think? think they're awesome. You still like them? Mm -hmm. He still likes them. <laughs> so yeah i mean they're they're, they're good to go yeah. you know for all the things we need them for <laughs> girls have asked if i take anything to keep my milk supply up well yeah. primarily um the thing that's helped with her milk supply is her nutrition you guys obviously know that hope you know those personal trainings pro provides meal plans well you can build the guides and stuff yeah like the graphic designing and everything and but her primarily, her approach is nutrition first, and whenever, after you gave birth, you were following your nutrition guide, and full body guide. And well, you know, the pregnancy fitness guide. Yeah, that too. We're not, like, I'm not here to, like, talk about my pregnancy fitness guide, per se, but, like, within there, it kind of shows how I ate while I was pregnant, and then how I'm continuing to eat now that I'm breastfeeding because mm -hmm. I'm focusing on whole clean foods. Lots of fruits, lots of veggies, lots of clean, clean carbs. proteins and carbs. Yeah. And that has made, I mean, because I don't know, this might be a little too personal. I've accidentally tasted Hope's milk before and it's, it's pretty fucking amazing. It tastes like honey milk, so. That's, oh, that's a lot that's graphic. That's, oh, that's a lot that's graphic. That's 
It's a lot. It's graphic. It's graphic, but I mean. But it's top shelf to say the least. She eats really well, and her breast milk is really good. So top shelf breast milk. That's why Chubb Mugga is Chubb Mugga. I mean, because she can't get enough of that. Land of milk and honey. Sweet, sweet boob. Land of milk and honey over here. Uh, yeah. So, and then I still take my prenatals. Um, I get them from Whole Foods. They're called Garden of Life. Um, I can put a little link, like. Yeah. And then, yeah. Abigail asked, how long do I plan on breastfeeding Isabel for? So... I definitely plan on breastfeeding her for at least the first year. Um, halfway through. Yeah, halfway through. I've been doing a lot of research lately, and the it's called the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, really strongly believes, like they've done a lot of research, and it has been conclusive in finding that breastfeeding for the first two years of your child's life is extremely beneficial to their health. I know the American Pediatrics Association say to breastfeed for at least the first six months exclusively. Yeah. And then if you can or want to for the first year, but I kind of really want to push it to two years. Well, I mean, we're, we're already starting to incorporate solids into our diet, so that doesn't mean exclusive breastfeeding for two years. That means like... No, she'll slowly start tapering off. So yeah. it would be, I mean, geez... When you get, I guess from what we've learned so far, like the closer you start getting to like them being one years old, you may only be breastfeeding them like in the morning and at night, mm -hmm. maybe in the afternoon. So that's a lot less. And I will say that it's starting to become like a really like beautiful, incredible relationship that like me and Chubb have. Yeah. She'll just like smile at her halfway through and just yeah. and then hey mama. You know. yeah. so it's like we have it's like our little time together now whenever I feed her because she's become a lot more aware of her surroundings and I'm like I don't know if I want to give that up at one year so one of the main reasons that I'm sitting here is because I felt like it was important to talk about how the guys can help with the whole process and what I've what I did is one I did a whole lot of research um I swear I spent oh my gosh. All, those, all those like like late nights that we spent up, you know, breastfeeding Chubb, I was up trying to figure out what was going on. I was the one that kind of like learned more about the high milk and the four milk and what cluster feeding yeah, was Yeah, like Cody knows more about breastfeeding than I do with, um, as far as the types of milk. Biology of it. Yeah, the bio like from a biological standpoint. And it's, you know, I, I was able to kind of calm her down and tell her this is normal because... This is what's happening. This is why her poop's different right now. This is why this is happening, so on and so forth. And like so, growth spurts and kind of like yeah, how that happens. Be, um, be helpful in trying to find out how, like, what's going on so that your spouse isn't just lost in this, like, or maze partner, of partner, spouse yeah. or partner. Spouse or partner, yeah. Also, um, just because you don't have the boobs doesn't mean that you can't get out of bed, change the diaper, and bring her to mom in the middle of the night. You know, she doesn't have to do everything. Yeah, that's also something, like, I just realized that's kind of crazy is, like, we, it's been six months now, and me and Cody have never given each other, like, um, we never taken turns in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. So we've always been, like, me and you. Yeah. Like, he gets her up, like, she starts crying, he'll pick, he'll pick her up and change her. Then he brings her to me, and then I feed her, and then you put, put her, her back, back down. down. Yeah. And so we've never, like, just yeah. took a, taken a night shift before. Well, I can't... I, can't, I, I didn't want to do it. it by myself, and then you didn't want to do it by yourself. I can't do it by myself, because Chubb doesn't take bottles and go to sleep. She needs the nursing. Like, yeah, because the nursing really, like, that's definitely helped a lot. Nursing her has helped a lot with sleeping, because... Mm -hmm. Like, whenever you nurse, um, for those of you that don't know, it, re it releases oxytocin in your body and your baby's body. So that is extremely beneficial when it comes time to putting them down at night for bed because it just really, like, helps them relax and helps them fall asleep. Mm -hmm. One question I kept seeing was, does working out affect your breastfeeding? Oh, yeah. And I don't understand where that logic is coming from. But don't be mean. I'm not being mean. I just don't. I don't know where they're getting that that thought process from. I'm just saying, there's no reason that exercise. 
Well, I think I kind of understand it. Like, I think people are thinking that if they work out more and they lose weight, that maybe them losing weight can hinder their milk supply. But as long as you're you're eating eating healthy and enough food, then you can lose weight and still breastfeed successfully. Yeah, it doesn't have a negative effect, but exercising while you're breastfeeding is, like, extremely beneficial to your supply and your body overall. It's like you really can't go wrong there. Um, one girl asked, does one breast produce more milk than the other? Um, you, you can't really answer that one, but I will say that left boob has, like, <laughs> is way better than right boob. Left so boob. right boob cannot compete with left boob. I don't know why. I just get more milk from my left boob. And I also, like, I don't know, it just kind of seems like it's easier for Chubb to nurse. And also, like, my right boob feels more uncomfortable than my left one whenever I nurse. So, just kind of weird breastfeeding things. I see this a lot, but they ask, when is baby number two? My uterus needs break, okay? We're just trying to figure out life right now with Chubb. It's going amazing. We're st- I mean, we're still f- trying to get to the point where we're sleeping through the night all the time. And I've had... Oh, my God. So last night was horrible. Whoa. Because she Chubb, tried us. Yeah, she was waking up three, four, five, six, seven, and just like trying to have a boob bonanza today. Mm. Just boob any way she can get it. That's how Chubb is sometimes. And I am like hell to the no. Whenever I think about those first three or four weeks again, where it was just like she's breastfeeding and she falls asleep on hope, and then I pick her up. And I start to bring her to her bed, and she just wakes up all of a sudden and starts freaking out. And you just have to bring her back to the boob, and over and over and over and over. And you don't get any sleep. You might get like 45 minutes of sleep a night for like three weeks. Fuck that. I, I, I think maybe we might have another baby in the future. I don't know. He, You're leaning more towards no. I'm, I'm leaning more. I was leaning more towards no, but lately I'm like, mm, maybe. We'll talk about it. <laughs> oh, this is a really funny question, and I was like, okay, so Miss Taylor asks, how were your nipples affected by breastfeeding, if they were affected at all? I'm going to be completely honest. These nipples are never going to be the same again. They're just not. Yeah. I mean, they're not horrible, you know? If you just, I mean, there's no way, because you're going to you have a little gummy mongoloid. Just... <laughs> It's not a mongoloid, but I mean, you know, I'm sure you can kind of imagine. You can't stop, won't stop. Won't don't stop. imagine, don't imagine. I'm not trying to put those mental images in your mind, but... I mean, it's just not... It's never going to be the same. There's parts of my body that will never be the same again, and but that's... That's part of you motherhood. Know, but that's love, you know? That's just love. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten a lot of questions as far as, like, how I eat and, like, for me to, like, say exactly how I eat and everything like that, which is why I've created the Pregnancy Fitness Guide. And the Nutrition Guide. And the Nutrition Guide. But I am working on, well, both of us are working on it because we both make the guides, but on a postpartum fitness guide, which hopefully will be coming out very soon. Um, Just from my personal experience over the last six months, I think that... That definitely could be very beneficial, and a lot of you guys are asking for it. Mm-hmm. Just to really kind of show how you can work out after you give birth, what like what's safe for you, Nutrition what's beneficial for you. Yeah, exactly. With breastfeeding, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. But for right now, I would highly recommend you can check out my website and download my pregnancy fitness guide or my nutrition guide, and it lays out everything in there and helps you build your meal plan, and it helps you, like, tailor it to your lifestyle. Okay, so this is an important question. Um, Elizabeth Nava wants me to talk about gym supplements that are safe while breastfeeding. Um, I'm going to put the disclaimer out there that whatever you do decide to take, you know, I highly recommend that you learn it by your doctor or your midwife um, before you do take it. I take vegetable protein, um and pre-workout. The types of pre-workouts that I stay with are one... Come from more natural sources. Yeah, like they have natural stimulants in them from like green tea or coffee, yeah. that type of stuff. Like I don't do the crazy pre-workouts that like make you feel all cracked out. 
your skin's I, on fire. I like those. But yeah, I don't. I never liked them before, and I definitely won't take them now because I am breastfeeding. But so far, like I would say, if you really need a pre workout, then I would go with something that has like green tea extract or something like that in there. So the last question that we're going to touch on or the last topic is going to be nursing in public. Um, so I know you're rolling your eyes. Like, I guess he gets, I've posted a few pictures on my IG of me nursing Chubb and you get really irritated with people that freak out about it. The thing is that I, IG is like really known for women showing their bodies off and you know, like half like shaking their booties, shaking in the their camera. booties and nipple slips and stuff like that, and it's like that seems that's to all, be more accepted. That's, that's all fine, and that's the thing is that, that that is fine. If girls want to show their bodies off, you know, more power to you. I've never stood in Hope's way. I support her. I take pictures half the time whenever they're sexy things. Hey, okay. but once it turns into something that is other than being sexy for people. Everybody will play. They lose their they mind. Lose their a lot of minds. people lose their mind. And it's, you know, I haven't, like, seen it happen yet because I think we live in a pretty progressive area. But in a lot of places, if you were to breastfeed in public, people would look at you like, what do you Probably do? Probably where we used to live. Yeah, like, go cover yourself up, go somewhere. You know, that's I mean, I do, thing. like, cover Chubb's head up with a blanket. Um, but sometimes, like, I'm not, I don't know. Like... I think it took me about a month yeah. before I actually felt comfortable enough with feeding her in a restaurant. And now I just put her in the baby carrier when we're out for sushi or like wherever we're at and I'll just like cover her little head with a blanket and she's eating while I'm eating and it works great. Yeah. And I don't care anymore. I don't feel uncomfortable. And a lot of times I don't even cover her up when I'm feeding her in the car. So I don't know. I'm just starting to care a lot less and less about people seeing my boob while I'm breastfeeding her. I kind of, I still cover myself up when we're like in a public area, kind of more for other people's comfort. Basically, you shouldn't be embarrassed of breastfeeding in public. Mm -mm. And just, if people look at no. you weird, people look at you weird, just flip them off. You're feeding your baby. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 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 We hope that this has been informative and beneficial to all of you ladies and guys out there. Yeah, just remember that it's supposed to be hard in the beginning and you just have to stay strong and keep working on it and it gets better and it gets easier and it turns into a beautiful like relationship that you get to share with your baby. So it's 100% worth it. It really is. Mm -hmm. And then you get chubba gubs. Chubba gubs. They're all chubby and flubby. <laughs> all right, well, we love you guys. We gotta go now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.